and I have two families of schools. I have the St. Ignatius of Loyola family of schools and the associate elementary schools with that school. And I also have the Notre Dame family of schools in Burlington and the associate elementary schools that belong to the Notre Dame family of schools. Um, I'm also the um, coordinating superintendent of academic services, so part of my role is to coordinate the efforts of all of the academic superintendents to ensure that there's an alignment of services and supports to our schools and to our <coughs> students. So we're just having a few people wander in, so we might actually be able to create four groups um, as it looks right now. So. Um, could I have the two of you uh, go over to the far table, if that's okay? Are you a couple, or do you know each other? Okay, so it's kind of nice sometimes to ha ha be sharing ideas with someone other than our spouse, so I'm wondering if someone might uh, join this couple over here. Can someone do that? That would be great. So this, this particular workshop is all about uh, Catholic schools, so what's the difference? And you know, when, when we're out and about in either a social setting or perhaps you're out to dinner with other couples and you know, you hear comments like, or you read in the paper, there should be one school system and someone might say to you, so you know, you send your, your students to, uh, your children to a Catholic school, why? Like what's the difference? And what we do find is sometimes we're stuck with what to say. And you often hear people say, well, it's just different. You know, you walk into a Catholic school, it feels different. But I'm not sure if that's enough to be able to really, uh, first of all, celebrate, uh, protect, and promote Catholic education anymore. We need more language to be able to really be able to, to discuss what, what a Catholic school is all about. So that's the whole purpose of this uh, workshop today, is to give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about all the aspects of Catholic education with the hopes that you can go out and when you're asked questions like that, um, you, you, can, you can tell about it with vigor and enthusiasm and celebration for the great things that happen in our schools. So the learning goal today is to provide all stakeholders with a common language with which to speak about the distinctiveness of Catholic education. Um, and so we're going to begin firstly just to kind of um, get you thinking about it. So if someone said to you, why do you send your child to a Catholic school? What's the difference? How might you respond at this time without going through this workshop? Yes? Religion classes? So support with faith development. Anything else that you might say? Values, so Catholic values. <laughs> So the teachers are promoting Catholic values and the community. It's an extension of the virtues you try to teach in your home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, I think you've really captured some key ideas. And what we have done as a Catholic school board is we've actually uh, developed some documents um, in order to really uh, promote, protect, and celebrate Catholic education, giving people uh, the language to describe the distinctiveness of Catholic education. And there are three documents here. The first is an overview. It gives you just some broad language. And um, it's divided into four pillars. And those pillars are actually reflected on this poster here. Catholic learning environment, Catholic curriculum, Catholic staff, and Catholic community. So all of the documents are based on those four pillars and they're symbolized here in these little pictures. And so in this document, it's just an overview, um, and it gives you just a, a paragraph on each of those pillars, and it also links it to the gospel story of On the Road to Emmaus, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that later. The second document takes those four pillars, and it gives a little bit more detail on each of those pillars. And we're going to be using this particular document this afternoon to really engage in the language about the distinctiveness of Catholic education. The third document is really an assessment tool that our schools are using presently. So um, it allows all of our school staff, our principals, uh, teachers, and non-academic staff, and school council members and parents to sit down and to consider the four pillars of Catholic education what's happening in their schools and how they can continue to nurture and develop those four pillars. Okay, so those are the uh, three documents that our school board has developed. Um, again, the purpose of it is to be able to give people, all stakeholders, the language they need to be able to describe and fully understand what makes a Catholic school distinct. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to allow you to really immerse yourself in that second document and each of you on your table has a chart um, that has one of the symbols on it. And so you're going to work on that particular uh, pillar. And there's a question that is asked of you. And what you need to do is go into your booklet. And you have a highlighter. And these are for you to take away. Begin to highlight some of the key messages about that particular pillar. And you're going to record it on the chart in front of you. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass those charts around so that each group has an opportunity to add to that particular uh, pillar. And then we'll bring them up here and we'll look at them together. Now a couple of you have, um, there a group before you already started, so you can look at some of the things that are added and then you can add more if you like, either on the back or somewhere on, on the sheet as well. Okay, does everyone understand the task before us at this time? Okay, you can get started then. We'll give you about five minutes on each of those um, pillars, and then we'll move them along. This is actually a different activity, so you can flip this over if you needed more room. Okay, well, what's on there? First of all, oh, yeah, yeah why don't you take a look? Yeah. Or highlight or circle things that, you, that really stand out for you as important. Okay. Whatever you'd like to do with that. Okay.
guys like to color and draw? Would you like to play with some markers and some paper? Okay, draw a nice picture. There you go. <laughs> nice colors. And these are Mr. Sketchy. You know what's great about Mr. Sketchy? They smell, they smell great. <laughs> Would you like some sharp paper and markers too? Or are you going to work with your daddy? Okay. Are you able to add more to that chart, or okay, <laughs> still working through it? Or if there's things that that really stand out for you, feel free like to circle, put a star beside it, or whatever you, you like to do, just to add to it. <laughs> I'll just gather up the ones we're not using yet. Thank you very much. I'm going to give you just two more minutes, and then we're going to pass the posters around. <laughs> so don't feel you need to write everything, because your other uh, parents in the room will, um, will add to it. Alongside mummy today. Hey. <laughs> She's beautiful. What's her name? Sophia. Sophia. So pretty. So you you have children in school already? Yeah, yeah. my fourth daughter in daycare 
Mm -hmm. so she just oh, very nice. What school? Uh, St. Anthony. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. yeah, sister children. Mm -hmm. oh. It's lovely. I have two girls mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, husband's a member as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like daughters, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have you move your, um, your pillar, the one that you're working on, onto the group. We'll go this way. And so what I'd like you to do is take a look at the um, information in the document for that particular pillar and add anything that you think that the group before you may have missed or didn't get a chance to add. Okay, it looks like you're doing a great job with all the <laughs> stuff that you're adding here. So we'll move them along. We're going that way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I can read it. <laughs> it's like hard to read. Thank you. You're welcome. There you go. Yeah. Oh, some colors here. Yeah. There you go. That will show better. Oh. Sophia, how are you? Oh, the happy girl. Chill. The happy girl. Who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Who's that? Oh, what a good class. Everybody's working so hard. <laughs> it's the Catholic. It's the Catholic education. <laughs> I love it. That's great. What are you guys drawing back here? An angry bird that looks great. Oh. That's me. Is that you? And that's the flower and that's my name. Oh, did you print your name all by yourself? She's in wow. Junior kindergarten. Junior kindergarten? What school do you go to? I'm oh, Mother Teresa. Oh, well, you know what? I'll see you at Mother Teresa because I visit there a lot. Mm -hmm. That's her school too. You go to Mother Teresa too. Oh. Who's that? That's me, and that's Clarence. That's my name. Yeah, very good drawer. <laughs> and it smells good too. Your coat is there? Yeah. yeah. You know what happened with the pictures is the, the person that developed these for us, he, um, he didn't like the pictures we took because he was very fussy. They had to be really clear. With the, with the background to it, yeah, had to be taken. Yeah, he, but he wanted, so he said, you know, we need a professional photographer. So okay. we ended up having to reshoot all the photos. Oh. <laughs> so. But we still have the photos that we could use in different things. We're not so fussy. <laughs> So another minute, and then we'll pass those ones around. It's one or two ideas to add. What's that? 
Area might go. What's that? Warner Bay was one of your schools. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, they, they were curious to know whether there was like regular yeah. liturgies and masses. And, oh, and absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 He, he doesn't tell you. That's typical of teenagers. That's what I said. Yeah, what's what's a gospel reading first thing in the morning? Or what yeah, absolutely. Do? Every school starts with prayer every day, prayer and liturgy. Um, mm -hmm. There's a chaplaincy leader in every school. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah. so we have mass that belong to, as you know, St. Paul the Apostle mm -hmm. Parish. Mm -hmm. And actually St. Um, St. Gabriel's Parish also feeds St. Um, Notre Dame as well and so um, mass is celebrated on a fairly regular basis in liturgies and also in the classrooms there's liturgies that happen in the classrooms. We're going to talk a little bit more about what that looks like um, when we talk about Catholic environment and so on. So, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's pass them along. <laughs> Now you have Catholic school staff. Seven months. It's such a fun age. Oh, it's going to be a fun Christmas in your house. Mm -hmm. She's not quite mobile. Mm -hmm. So you take those with you, yes, yes, sure. um, and I'll give you a copy of, um, these are the Catholic graduate expectations. They're really, this is what, um, when a, a student graduates from our schools, we hope that they're able to, to bring forth to the world, so I hope that's helpful to you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, and we're going to move it around in one more minute, and then I think, are we on our last rotation? Did you, you're on three, so one more. One more thing. Bye, take care. Yes, we're going to go this way. You're doing a great job. These are full, which is great because you're you're thinking about the language, right, to describe what how Catholic schools are are distinct. So your last one is Catholic Curriculum. Yeah. 
Oh, you, you need to fill that out too, right? Uh, for your last. This one. Does, it, does everyone have one? Okay, just one more minute on that, and then um, if you finish your poster, uh, bring it forward, and we're going to put them up, and then I'm going to highlight just a few of the uh, the points on your chart. and everything, aren't you? So, so what we'll do now is we're going to take a look at each of the pillars and we're going to just uh, highlight some of the, the key uh, points that you've made. So the first one is Catholic learning environment. Using three word phrases, list the attributes of a Catholic learning environment. So um, you know what, I was really impressed to, to see some of the things that you've indicated here. Uh, encouraged to serve, sense of community reach our potential, promotes inclusivity and dialogue, et cetera, uh, common faith practices, love without conditions, reinforcing care and love. Often when people describe the Catholic learning environment, they quickly just draw, um, come to symbols visually represented. So they think about sort of all those external things, like there's a prayer center in the classroom or there's a cross on the wall. 
those are the symbols that make up a Catholic learning community. But as you've pointed out here, it's so much more than that. It's founded on the belief that every single child, every single person in that school is created in the image of God and therefore is loved and respected for uh, their dignity of, of created in the image of God. And so when we believe that, when that's foundational to us, then all of these other things happen. Every child is valued, every child is loved, every child is respected. And so when you have a community, that's where I think that's what people mean when you walk into a school, it feels different because I think you feel love, you feel valued, you feel important. Now that doesn't mean to say that we're perfect. Does bullying exist in Catholic schools? Yes. Um, are sometimes kids' feelings hurt? Yes. Do teachers make mistakes? Yes, we're all human. That's part of what, uh, what we are as humans. But the important thing is that teachers and staff continually bring children back to the message of created in the image of God, and therefore we are all valued, respected for every contribution, everything that we can bring to that, that uh, Catholic school and to our society. You know, and every gift is valued. So, you know, you could be a, um, a wonderful athlete or you could be a strong academic person. There's somebody else with the gift of a musical talent. There's someone else that is a great uh, writer. All of those things are valued and we continually reinforce that message. So that's what makes up the Catholic learning environment. Much, much more than just the visual symbols that are there to remind us of our faith, but it's so much more. So thank you for pointing all of that out. When you have those kinds of belief, beliefs, then you have the safe, caring environment, right? Catholic community. So how do our schools intentionally prepare students to be agents of the world? Help see the goodness in God's creation. Inspire students to make profound contributions to the world. Teaches to respect, love, and help everyone and spread the message of all. Teaches values and morals. Empower students to do the right things. Promote and support social justice outreach. Promote integration of faith and gospel into daily lives. Love of God and neighbor. Teaches that each person is loved by God. So when students are constantly um, taught these values, then you, you can imagine, it, I mean, it's actually very exciting. We have 30,000 students within this school board. When they're all being taught these messages, can you imagine the contributions that they are going to make to our society and to our world? Like it's just, it just kind of blows my mind. It's very exciting. Um, and you know, I, we're in a, a religion classroom, but I, you know, I'm looking at these Catholic social thoughts here. Um, you know, these are the things that are important in Catholic social teaching. Economic and political decisions must be based on human dig dignity. So our kids are being formed in that belief. So if they're going out to serve in a political manner or, you know, they're involved with the economy, that is a belief that is founded within them. And so those types of things are going to be good for humankind. Um, equality of man and woman, preferential option for the poor. If we believe these things and we're taught those things, then only goodness can come from that. So a very important message for us all to articulate is that our Catholic schools will contribute to society because we are forming children with all of these beliefs. So they'll go out and do good works in society. And I think that's something that we forget to, to say. Okay, so just a, a message that I think is very important. Catholic curriculum. What does curriculum with a difference look like in the Halton Catholic District School Board? Now, earlier, um, you know, somebody pointed out religion classes, and that's very important. We do have a very distinct religion and family life program from JK right up to grade 12. Um, but sometimes people think that that's the only difference in a Catholic school is it has a religion program. What people fail to realize is that the faith is woven through every single class every single aspect of the school community. We have what we call focus on faith, um, and they're based on those social justice themes from JK to grade 12. And teachers develop every single lesson with those social justice themes in mind. In fact, in their lesson plan templates, many of them have a section for the social justice theme, so they're constantly thinking about how am I relating this to our Catholic worldview. So that's integrated into all curriculum. But on top of that, 
Things like uh, recycling programs, some of our kids are part of a green team, etc. When they're working on those types of things, the teachers are constantly reminding them that the reason we're doing this is because we're called by God to be stewards of creation, to take care of what God has given us. So do you see how that Catholic view of the world is permeating every single aspect of what we do in the school community? Through our curriculum, through the activities, and um, uh, through the classes that we have. So you've captured a lot of that here. Uh, focus on faith, the Catholic lens or perspective, uh, curriculum founded in the Religion and Family Life program, uh, developing a Catholic identity and awareness um, of, of um, what, was you, what were you trying to say here? Um, not quite sure. Catholic teach, church teachings which are based on scripture and the Catholic church tradition, overarching Catholic theme for each grade. So that's very good. <laughs> Sure. Um, in yellow? In yellow. Oh. What we're, what we're learning is lifelong. Yes. So what we're practicing in here as students, we are really all on that same journey. That's right. Thank you for that. And then the last pillar is Catholic school staff. What are the varied ways our staff serves the board and the broader community? Our staff looks to Jesus Christ, the master teacher, as our role model of faith, and that permeates everything that we say and do. We build relationships that foster respect and love for others. We teach students to respect the rights and dignity of all human persons in a caring community, treat each child as a special gift from God, share in the faith and openly demonstrate and celebrate it. Staff foster a strong relationship between the home, school and parish. Now somebody had a, a good question earlier this morning. They said, um, how can you ensure that a teacher is actually a practicing Catholic and how can you ensure that a teacher is passing on the messages of our faith and I think that's a very good question so there's a few things that I had responded to that I'd like to share with you firstly um, what we have um, committed to within this school board is an adult faith formation program for our, our staff both academic and non-academic and so we really do believe that in order for our staff to be able to share their faith, they need to continually develop their own faith. I think we all do. And so we um, have uh, provided funding for them to attend these adult faith formation uh, programs. And that not only includes teachers, it includes educational assistants, custodians, secretaries, because every single member of that staff is important in that school community. So that's one of the ways that we feel that we can help nurture their faith development. Uh, secondly, um, as principals um, and superintendents, we are always monitoring what's happening in our classrooms. So principals are active in their classrooms, making sure that they see visual uh, signs uh, of that kind of faith development going on in, in classrooms. Um, as I said earlier, teachers have lesson plans that outline you know, integration of faith. Um, there is a teacher performance appraisal process which uh, a principal sits down with a teacher to review how they're integrating faith along as the instructional practices and assessment practices that they're using. So there's balances and checks to make sure that that's happening in the classroom. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of uh, background on, on how that, that occurs. Okay, so we have our four pillars. Uh, let's see how we're doing. We have five minutes. <laughs> And I had so many activities, I could have uh, been with you for a few hours. But anyway, what we were going to do next is we were going to look at um, 40 developmental assets. And so there's a handout there. And these developmental assets are based on research. And they are really what uh, researchers are saying are assets that are important in the development of a child. So what I was going to get you to do was to... Um, look at those, these four pillars again and how each of these four pillars uh, help students to develop these assets. But we won't do that because we don't have enough time. So what I'll do is I'll just pass you out a handout that I had and it looks at uh, some of those important pillars and how the Catholic uh, schools help to nurture those, those, um, those assets. Okay, so I'll pass those around to you just for, for you to read when you have some time. And 
I wanted to point out to you as well the Catholic graduate expectations and those are those right there so if you could each take a copy we have this here as uh, I don't have enough for you but it's also the Catholic graduate expectations so these are what we expect of our students once they finish grade 12 with us so that's just something that I'll, I'll give to you to review at home and to have as a reference if you need a reference on what the expectations are of Catholic school graduates. I'd, I'd also like to remind you of um, that survey that Alice Ann LeMay mentioned this morning. There's a little card in your um, folder. So if you are a graduate of Catholic schools, if you could kindly take the time to do the survey. I did it. It takes about 10-15 minutes and uh, it just asks you about how your Catholic education has impacted you um, as an adult. So if you could do that, that would be really helpful to us as we continue to develop um, our Catholic schools and what we need to do for our kids. And in closing, what I'd like to do is to have a little uh, prayer uh, celebration with you. So there is a sheet that um, looks like this. Is there one for, for each of you? You share. We have run out of them. Oh, there's, an extra, there's some extras over here. We're good. Okay. So I need someone to volunteer to be reader one. Thank you. Reader two. Anybody? Thank you. And reader three. Thank you. Okay. So we'll begin with the opening prayer, and this is about encountering Christ in our Catholic schools. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent us your Son, your perfect image, so that your love might be revealed, and so that we may understand what it means to be created in your divine image. We are thankful for the gift of Catholic education, where we are afforded opportunities daily to continue to encounter your love through Jesus, your Son. May we bear your image faithfully to do all those we serve in the Catholic educational community so that all may experience your goodness. We ask this through Jesus, the Master Teacher. Amen. And I'm going to read to you um, the Gospel story of the walk to Emmaus. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these past days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah, Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us 
while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And reader one, please. The travelers on the road to Amos failed to recognize that they walked with Christ. It was only when Jesus blessed and broke the bread that Cleopas and his companion recognized their Lord. We encounter Christ in our Catholic learning environment. In our Catholic schools, we recognize the risen Christ not only in the signs, symbols, and ritual actions of our faith, but also in the life-giving relationships where we are Christ before the other. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide opportunities to experience mystery in the rich traditions of our faith community. Open our eyes to recognize you. As Jesus walks with his companions, he interpreted to them things about himself in all the scriptures. What an education. Their hearts burned within them as they listened to their master. We encounter Christ in our Catholic curriculum. In our Catholic schools, our Catholic curriculum invites students to build their relationships with the person of Jesus Christ as witnessed by the Catholic faith, which recognizes the centrality of God, the dignity of the human person, and the importance of ethical actions. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide opportunities for faith connections throughout the academic day. Open our eyes to recognize you. Cleopas and his companions walked the road from Jerusalem together. They reflected on all that happened prior to and following the death of Jesus. We encounter Christ in our Catholic school staff. In our Catholic schools, our staff journey together as we grow in faith and the knowledge of Christ. As we model this faith in all that we do, we become Christ for the other. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide opportunities to, exp to experience the sacred in the other. Open our, our eyes, eyes to recognize you. Cleopas and his companion were forever changed by their encounter with the risen Lord. They immediately got up and returned to Jerusalem to tell the disciples all that they had witnessed. We give witness to Christ in our Catholic community. Enlightened by the good news, we go forth from our Catholic schools to proclaim the gospel in word and deed. Formed in faith, our actions serve to affirm all that is life-giving in our communities and to be critical of the aspects of our culture which are contrary to the values of our faith tradition. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to courageously embody you in our world. Open our eyes to recognize you. God of love, we are thankful for the gift of Catholic education. We are mindful that we are called to walk the road with Jesus, our teacher. May we learn his lessons of life and love, and may we allow him to accompany us in all that we do in the service of our students. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for participating today. I hope that I've given you some additional language to use when you are out celebrating, promoting, and protecting this beautiful gift of Catholic education. Thank you again. Thank you. Can I just ask one question for everybody too, please? If you might have your tickets from this session, if any last time the passports. Sorry, Mary Christmas. That's okay. <laughs> to serve a sense of community, reach our potential, promotes inclusivity and dialogue, etc. Uh, common faith practices, love without conditions, reinforcing care and love. Often when people describe the Catholic learning environment, they quickly just draw um, come to symbols visually represented. So they think about sort of all those external things, like there's a prayer center in the classroom or there's a cross on the wall. Those are the symbols that make up a Catholic learning community. But as you've pointed out here, it's so much more than that. It's founded on the belief that every single child, every single person in that school is created in the image of God and therefore is loved and respected for uh, their dignity of, of created in the image of God. And so when we believe that, when that's foundational to us, then all of these other things happen. Every child is valued, every child is loved, every child is respected. And so when you have a community, 
that's where I think that's what people mean when you walk into a school it feels different because I think you feel love you feel valued you feel important now that doesn't mean to say that we're perfect does bullying exist in Catholic schools yes um, are sometimes kids feelings hurt yes do teachers make mistakes yes we're all human that's part of what uh, what we are as humans but the important thing is that teachers and staff continually bring children back to the message of created in the image of God and therefore we are all valued respected for every contribution everything that we can bring to that, that uh, Catholic school and to our society you know and every gift is valued so you know you could be a, um, a wonderful athlete or you could be a strong academic person there's somebody else with the gift of a musical talent there's someone else that is a great uh, writer all of those things are valued and we continually reinforce that message so that's what makes up the Catholic learning environment much much more than just the visual symbols that are there to remind us of our faith but it's so much more so thank you for pointing all of that out when you have those kinds of belief beliefs then you have the safe caring environment right Catholic community so how do our schools intentionally prepare students to be agents of the world help see the goodness in God's creation inspire students to make profound contributions to the world teaches to respect love and help everyone and spread the message of all teaches values and morals empower students to do the right things promote and support social justice outreach promote integration of faith and gospel into daily lives love of God and neighbor teaches that each person is loved by God so when students are constantly um, taught these values then you you can imagine it I mean it's actually very exciting we have 30,000 students within this school board when they're all being taught these messages can you imagine the contributions that they are going to make to our society and to our world like it's just it just kind of blows my mind it's very exciting um, and you know I, we're in a, a religion classroom but I you know I'm looking at these Catholic social thoughts here um, you know these are the things that are important in Catholic social teaching economic and political decisions must be based on human dig dignity so our kids are being formed in that belief so if they're going out to serve in a political manner or you know they're involved with the economy there that is a belief that is founded within them and so those types of things are going to be good for humankind um, equality of man and woman preferential option for the poor we believe these things and we're taught those things then only goodness can come from that so a very important message for us all to articulate is that our Catholic schools will contribute to society because we are forming children with all of these beliefs so they'll go out and do good works in society and I think that's something that we forget to to say okay so just a, a message that I think is very important Catholic curriculum what does curriculum with a difference look like in the Halton Catholic District School Board now earlier um, you know somebody pointed out religion classes and that's very important we do have a very distinct religion and family life program from JK right up to grade 12 um, but sometimes people think that that's the only difference in a Catholic school is it has a religion program what people fail to realize is that the faith is woven through every single class every single aspect of the school community we have what we call focus on faith um, and they're based on those social justice themes from JK to grade 12 and teachers develop every single lesson with those social justice themes in mind in fact in their lesson plan templates many of them have a section for the social justice theme so they're constantly thinking about how am I relating this to our Catholic worldview so that's integrated into all curriculum but on top of that things like uh, recycling programs some of our kids are part of a green team etc when they're working on those types of things the teachers are constantly reminding them that the reason we're doing this is because we're called by God to be stewards of creation to take care of what God has given us so do you see how that Catholic view of the world is permeating every single aspect of what we do in the school community through our curriculum through the activities and um, uh, through the classes that we have so you've captured a lot of that here uh, focus on faith the Catholic lens or perspective 
uh, curriculum founded in the Religion and Family Life program, uh, developing a Catholic identity and awareness um, of, of um, what, was you, what were you trying to say here? Um, not quite sure. Catholic teach, church teachings, which are based on scripture and the Catholic church tradition, overarching Catholic theme for each grade. So that's very good. <laughs> I think what we were trying to capture there was that sure. um, in yellow, in yellow. Yes. Oh. What, we're, what we're learning is lifelong. So yes. What we're practicing in here as students, we are really all on that same journey. That's right. Thank you for that. And then the last pillar is Catholic school staff. What are the varied ways our staff serves the board and the broader community? Our staff looks to Jesus Christ, the master teacher, as our role model of faith, and that permeates everything that we say and do. We build relationships that foster respect and love for others. We teach students to respect the rights and dignity of all human persons in a caring community, treat each child as a special gift from God, share in the faith, and openly demonstrate and celebrate it. Staff foster a strong relationship between the home, school, and parish. Now somebody had a, a good question earlier this morning. They said, um, how can you ensure that a teacher is actually a practicing Catholic? And how can you ensure that a teacher is passing on the messages of our faith? And I think that's a very good question. So there's a few things that I had responded to that I'd like to share with you. Firstly, um, what we have um, committed to within this school board is an adult faith formation program for our, our staff, both academic and non-academic. And so we really do believe that in order for our staff to be able to share their faith, they need to continually develop their own faith. I think we all do. And so we um, have uh, provided funding for them to attend these adult faith formation uh, programs. And that not only includes teachers, it includes educational assistants, custodians, secretaries, because every single member of that staff is important in that school community. So that's one of the ways that we feel that we can help nurture their faith development. Uh, secondly, um, as principals um, and superintendents, we are always monitoring what's happening in our classroom. So principals are active in their classrooms, making sure that they see visual uh, signs uh, of that kind of faith development going on in, in classrooms. Um, as I said earlier, teachers have lesson plans that outline you know, integration of faith. Um, there is a teacher performance appraisal process, which uh, a principal sits down with a teacher to review how they're integrating faith along as the instructional practices and assessment practices that they're using. So there's balances and checks to make sure that that's happening in the classroom. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of uh, background on, on how that, that occurs. Okay, so we have our four pillars. Uh, let's see how we're doing. We have five minutes. And I had so many activities, I could have uh, been with you for a few hours. But anyway, what we were going to do next is we were going to look at um, 40 developmental assets. And so there's a handout there. And these developmental assets are based on research. And they are really what uh, researchers are saying are assets that are important in the development of a child. So what I was going to get you to do was to... Um, look at those, these four pillars again and how each of these four pillars uh, help students to develop these assets. But we won't do that because we don't have enough time. So what I'll do is I'll just pass you out a handout that I had and it looks at uh, some of those important pillars and how the Catholic uh, schools help to nurture those, those, um, those assets. Okay, so I'll pass those around to you just for, for you to read when you have some time. And I wanted to point out to you as well the Catholic graduate expectations. And those are those right there. So if you could each take a copy. We have this here as, uh, I don't have enough for you, but it's also the Catholic graduate expectations. So these are what we expect of our students once they finish grade 12 with us. So that's just something that I'll, I'll give to you to review at home and to have as a reference if you need a reference on what the expectations are of Catholic school graduates. I'd, I'd also like to remind you of um, that survey that Alice Ann LeMay mentioned this morning. There's a little card in your um, 
folder. So if you are a graduate of Catholic schools, if you could kindly take the time to do the survey. I did it. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it just asks you about how your Catholic education has impacted you um, as an adult. So if you could do that, that would be really helpful to us as we continue to develop um, our Catholic schools and what we need to do for our kids. And in closing, what I'd like to do is to have a little uh, prayer uh, celebration with you. So there is a sheet that um, looks like this. Is there one for, for each of you? Can you share? We have run out of them. Oh, there's, an extra, there's some extras over here. We're good? Okay. So I need someone to volunteer to be reader one. Thank you. Reader two. Anybody? Thank you. And reader three. Thank you. Okay. So we'll begin with the opening prayer. And this is about encountering Christ in our Catholic schools. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent us your Son, your perfect image, so that your love might be revealed, and so that we may understand what it means to be created in your divine image. We are thankful for the gift of Catholic education, where we are afforded opportunities daily to continue to encounter your love through Jesus, your Son. May we bear your image faithfully to do all those we serve in the Catholic educational community so that all may experience your goodness. We ask this through Jesus, the Master Teacher. Amen. And I'm going to read to you um, the Gospel story of the walk to Emmaus. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these past days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah, Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And reader one, please. The travelers on the road to Amos failed to recognize that they walked with Christ. It was only when Jesus blessed 
and broke the bread, like Cleopas and his companion recognize their Lord. We encounter Christ in our Catholic learning environment. In our Catholic schools, we recognize the risen Christ not only in the signs, symbols, and ritual actions of our faith, but also in the life-giving relationships where we are Christ for the other. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide <coughs> opportunities to experience mystery in the rich traditions of our faith community. Open our eyes to recognize you. As Jesus walks with his companions, he interpreted to them things about himself in all the scriptures. What an education. Their hearts burned within them as they listened to their master. We encounter Christ in our Catholic curriculum. In our Catholic schools, our Catholic curriculum invites students to build their relationships with the person of Jesus Christ as witnessed by the Catholic faith, which recognizes the centrality of God the dignity of the human person and the importance of ethical actions. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide opportunities for faith connections throughout the academic day. Open our eyes to recognize you. Cleopas and his companions walked the road from Jerusalem together. They reflected on all that happened prior to and following the death of Jesus. We encounter Christ in our Catholic school staff. In our Catholic schools, our staff journey together as we grow in faith and the knowledge of Christ. As we model this faith in all that we do, we become Christ for the other. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to provide opportunities to, exp to experience the sacred in the other. Open our, our eyes, eyes to, to recognize, recognize you. you. Cleopas and his companion were forever changed by their encounter with the risen Lord. They immediately got up and returned to Jerusalem to tell the disciples all that they had witnessed. We give witness to Christ in our Catholic community. Enlightened by the good news, we go forth from our Catholic schools to proclaim the gospel in word and deed. Formed in faith, our actions serve to affirm all that is life-giving in our communities and to be critical of the aspects of our culture which are contrary to the values of our faith tradition. Lord, may our Catholic educational communities continue to courageously embody you in our world. Open our eyes to recognize you. God of love, we are thankful for the gift of Catholic education. We are mindful that we are called to walk the road with Jesus, our teacher. May we learn his lessons of life and love, and may we allow him to accompany us in all that we do in the service of our students. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for participating today. I hope that I've given you some additional language to use when you are out celebrating, promoting, and protecting this beautiful gift of Catholic education. Thank you again. Thank you. Can I just ask one question for everybody, too, please? If you want to have your tickets from this session, if any last time, the passports. Sorry, Mary. That's okay. <laughs>